it, it's a pretty heavy question. Um, it's really been unbelievable. Um, where I live here on Maui, uh, we were evacuated Tuesday night. My wife and, and our dog uh, were evacuated. We got all the emer emergency warnings and um, you know, our phones were buzzing. Uh, we went in the backyard, saw flames, saw smoke, and knew that it was getting serious. And uh, it was, as I was getting my alerts from uh, Maui County also, uh, I knew that this thing was really taking a turn for the worse. We've been given warning since Sunday that there was gonna be hurricane force winds from Hurricane Dora that passed just south of us. Uh, so there were high wind warnings and red flag warnings. We're in drought conditions here. Uh, so, you know, it's a recipe for, for true disaster. Um, and then from Tuesday, you know, night on, uh, it's just been the most surreal thing that you can imagine. Um, I'm fortunate that, that we're alive. I'm fortunate that our home was spared. I'm fortunate that I'm in a position to be able to go after entertainment folks that I know. Uh, in my career in the industry to ask for assistance and donations and help. And it's just been, uh, it's really been overwhelming, but, you know, trying to do my part and uh, help our community. And sadly, my understanding from Maui County and from the governor is that we've had dozens of lives lost there. And also, it sounds like a lot of people at this point are still missing. Yeah. Uh, you know, the number uh, of deceased that's been reported uh, is probably going to be far less than what the final tally is going to be. Uh, there's belief that the fire was so strong and the wind was so strong and the way that it hit Lahaina that there are probably uh, people that literally were vaporized by the fire. Uh, you know, the rescue efforts have been consistent and uh, amazing by the folks that the county has brought in to assist in those efforts. And it's to really think and, and fathom how this fire started and literally wiped out Lahaina Town in 17 minutes. When firemen arrived, uh, you know, there weren't even flames burning anymore because it happened so quick and so fast. What sort of stories are you hearing from people who were able to evacuate to get out of there safely? I know that we've heard reports of people, according to the Coast Guard, jumping into the water to escape. What sort of stories have you heard from folks in that area? Well, we have a, we have a very popular, famous gentleman uh, here who's Hawaiian who lives in Lahaina. His name is Archie Kalepa. Archie is a waterman. Um, very amazing surfer, but uh, any TV show or film that comes to the state of Hawaii in films, Brian is hired uh, as, a, as a marine coordinator. So he drives boats, he drives jet skis, he handles the water activity uh, on basically anything in the last 20 years that you've seen filmed uh, in Hawaii, um, he, he's been a, a part of. And he, uh, yesterday, the story I heard was that he went out on his jet ski and was pulling uh, bodies out of the harbor. You know, people, uh, when you, if you're on Front Street and you're in Lahaina Town and you were trying to escape, at, at that point, the only way to go is into the water. And uh, the smoke was so thick and the heat was so intense that even people that were in the water were inhaling smoke and drowning and burning. And I think that the uh, people that were rescued in the water um, you know, that, that was the only place to go. I, I, I know there was a, a story of three, three girls that literally hid behind a break wall in between the harbor and Front Street and had masks on. And, uh, you know, one of the girls, her hair caught on fire and that was, that was their escape. And uh, there was just nowhere to go. There was traffic and people were trying to get out. And this thing consumed Lahaina Town in a matter of minutes and destroyed everything in its path. Uh, the wind was incredibly strong, the heat, and you know that's all that it takes to, to start a brush fire is dry conditions, drought conditions, high winds, and a high wind was knocking over power lines and any little spark or ember you know, 
can create devastation, which is exactly what it did. And, uh, you know, I know there's going to be stories coming out uh, in the next few days about some of the tragedy. And, you know, there's also a lot of heroism right now. There's a lot of people that have lost their homes and are uh, lost everything that they have, and they're still out there trying to help the people that survived. But it, it's complete and utter devastation beyond what anyone could imagine. It was like an atomic bomb or some huge bomb went off and destroyed everything. It melted everything and destroyed everything. Cement is the only thing that survived. I can't even begin to imagine. A lot of people I've spoken with have said that the images, the videos just really don't do it justice. And I imagine that is uh, most likely the case for sure. So you, I understand, are actually working to help those who have been directly impacted. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I actually started a GoFundMe and I'm partnering with the Hawaii Community Foundation. Uh, they're a local nonprofit that is really hands-on and at the forefront of distributing uh, money, uh, necessary supplies and goods, food, water, uh, communication, those sort of things to the people directly affected. Um, I'm also partnering with the Maui Humane Society. You know, there uh, there's sadly images uh, from the aftermath of uh, dead animals in the street, and there's hundreds of dogs and cats that were able to escape and flee that are houseless and don't have homes. And the Maui Humane Society is already tapped out in their resources and their ability to house more pets. So I think any little bit that we can do to uh, to help that situation, um, you know, it's, uh, it's tragic obviously to see humans and uh, equally as tragic to see pets and dogs and cats that have, have been killed by this and so, uh, I just wanted to do something to be able to help my community. And there are some great organizations out there and some great nonprofits that are set up to, to assist, assist this. But I wanted to reach out to the entertainment community. Uh, I've spent 25 years in the business. I've been on Maui for 10 as the film commissioner. Uh, I worked 13 years for Adam Sandler. Um, I, I just wanted to use every bit of uh, connection and resource that I have to help in any way that I can. and because I help uh, incoming productions, whether it's film, TV, or a commercial, or a photo shoot. I do their, their permitting, I help them hire crew, and with accommodations, car rentals, um, uh, other vendors that are on the island to assist. And so I wanted to reach out to the people in Hollywood that bring that business here and say, you know, look what has happened to us, please help any way that you can. So. Uh, you know, I, I've been contacted by HBO and the folks at White Lotus. Mike White himself reached out and wants to help any way that he can. And I think we're trying to plan a, a benefit concert at this point. And, uh, you know, we don't have a date for it yet, but just anything that I can do to the people that I know the best, which is in the entertainment industry, I, I wanted to do more. And there's plenty of volunteers. In fact, they're, they're overflowing with volunteers at some of the shelters and the service centers. And so uh, I wanted to take some time uh, and help in the way that I could, which is reach out to the entertainment community and get some support there because we, we love when people come and highlight Maui and highlight Lahaina and highlight what the Hawaiian culture is about. And uh, just, you know, looking in that direction for assistance. What does it mean to you to see so many people from not just Hawaii, but across the country here who are trying to show support? They are making donations. They're forming groups, doing whatever they can to help those who have been impacted. What does that mean to you? You know, it, it means uh, that I feel privileged to live in Hawaii. I made a choice to leave L.A. 10 years ago and leave the industry as, as my job and career at the time I was doing and come here and make a change here and bring the film industry to Maui and to Maui County. And we've had some really great success here in the last 10 years. And so for me to come here and feel the privilege of learning the culture, learning uh, the, the people and the traditions, um, I'm beyond proud at this point to be in a position where I can go to the entertainment community and help because what I've seen out there and the images that I've seen and the staff meetings that I've been in with the county is is beyond what you can really imagine in a natural disaster like this. So I just, uh, I, I'm proud 
to live here. I'm, I'm fortunate to be alive and have my home and have a job and have my family here. And uh, I just want to take every opportunity that I possibly can, whether it's pennies or dimes or dollars that I can collect and go to the right places to help these people here because this is where I live now. This is where my life is going to be. And um, I, I'm just, I'm proud that there are people really taking the necessary steps to give assistance. Um, we've never seen anything like this. There was a horrible tsunami on the Big Island in 1960. There was Hurricane Nikki in 1992. And then there was Pearl Harbor. I mean, this is, you know, this is devastating to our island community and to the Hawaiian culture. So I'm just, uh, I'm really proud that I'm a part of it and want to do everything I can to help. And my last question for you here, what message do you have for the people of Lahaina and of Hawaii right now as they do try to cope with, with all of this, yourself included? Well, I know that communication has been very difficult with people on the west side of Maui. They've, they've lost everything. There's no gas, there's no power, there's no water, no electricity, there's no radio signal, no cell signal. So it's been very difficult to communicate with that side of the island. So, you know, as we start to get more resources from National Guard and FEMA and folks like that here, um, you know, we've gotten generous donations from Jeff Bezos, who's a Maui resident and rebuilding uh, the west side of Maui. So really, uh, you know, it's just uh, the, the people need to be told what's going on. It's been difficult, I understand, but the county and the state, I believe, are really trying to take the steps to, uh, you know, help the situation. I know the road finally opened for people who live in Lahaina and on that side. So if you show your ID and can prove where you live, they let you in. And, you know, I'm very close to the Kahaili'i family who is a renowned musical family in the Hawaiian culture and in Maui and they've lost everything they've lost all their music instruments you know and this was uh music is such a part of the Hawaiian culture and to see their devastation of not only losing a home but losing the tools that they like to express their love of the culture and their history uh, as Hawaiians you know is really heartbreaking so uh, I, I just you know if I could reach out if I could go to Lahaina and and start cleanup efforts, I'm happy to do that. That's probably gonna be called upon here as soon as the toxicity levels in the air uh, go down. The county employees and state employees here will probably be commandeered to go assist in the cleanup efforts. But I think right now the biggest thing has been communication and getting enough food and water over there. So hopefully today, you know, it, it's another beautiful Maui day and we can use this opportunity to go help those people in need over there. It's, it's a very, very, sad and emotional situation. Tracy Bennett, Maui Film Commissioner, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and provide that information, kind of a firsthand account there. Is there anything else that you wanna add before I let you go? Well, I, I think, you know, there's, um, it's important if people wanna donate that they go to the right donate, donative uh, partners and the Hawaii Community Foundation is based here and um, it's very quick in the response time and getting the people what they need. So if people can donate to the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Maui Humane Society, you know, the direct people that, that need assistance, of course, uh, uh, the Maui Red Cross and Maui United Way uh, are also good, but uh, the, the Hawaii Community Foundation right now is uh, boots on the ground helping people that need it the most right now. And, um, you know, we uh, everybody loves Hawaii and everybody loves coming to Maui. And we've had to ask some of our tourists to, to leave the island so that we can uh, be with our community and help these cleanup efforts and help the, the people that need it the most and give up some of the hotel rooms to the residents who've lost everything. There are thousands of homes and people, uh, you know, losing their lives and, and homes lost. And we're just trying to, we're trying to help everybody that that needs it and this isn't a good time to be a tourist in maui um the other islands would would welcome you so we just need our time to grieve and to uh clean up and they're still searching for missing names there uh, from what i understand right now there's still one to two thousand names on a list of missing people and uh this may be a situation similar to 9 11 where you know 
they were in the buildings, but they're vaporized and gone, and there are no remains. So it's going to be harrowing, I think, the number that comes out in the next several days. Uh, so we're just mentally preparing for that and emotionally preparing for that and uh, trying to do the best that we can to uh, help the people that need it right now and then move forward when the time is right. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We appreciate it. Uh, mahalo for, for having me. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the Macad TV family. Please like and share Macad TV. We love you all. Please support Macad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.